Bees are a great example of an animal society. They've got lots of rules which they uh, live by. They live in a colony which is called a swarm. And the swarm can actually move around, but it, it has a stable center, which is called a hive, which most of us think of as a bee colony. And the purpose of it is to work together in a group to gather pollen from all the flowers and to uh, produce it into honey, which they will use then to feed the other bees. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about what uh, the different bees are. There's only three types of bees. That's good. You got your queen, who is uh, normally much larger than the other bees, and that's the only fertile uh, female, so she's the key breeder. Then you got all the drones here. They're pretty big too. They're the males, and they're also fertile, so they're going to go ahead and breed with the queen. Most of the bees are just the worker bees here. They're all female. They're all pretty much genetically the same. They perform all the jobs. They gather the pollen. They make the honey. They build the hive. They protect the hive, and so forth. The bad news, though, is that they're doing it selflessly because they are uh, sterile they cannot uh, reproduce. How do you reproduce? Well, it's really interesting. Um, so we got a queen, so how do, you, how do you get the queen then? So the bees are gonna make this nice honeycomb here, and they lay their little larva bees inside there. And every now and then they decide, the workers, we need a new queen. And so what they do is they go over these honeycombs here, and they let out a secretion which comes from their glands. This is called royal jelly. Don't you love the name of that? And this causes the eggs actually to develop differently. They become much bigger, and that's how you get a new queen. So the worker bees actually choose which larva is going to become the queen. The reason why animals live, of course, in uh, societies is because the benefits outweigh the costs. So what are the costs of bees living together? Well, you're going to have enormous amount of inbreeding. Uh, but, you know, I'm not so sure that's a cost because they, they may want that to be their aim. I mean, bees are genetically pretty much the same, and so they're not interested so much probably in inbreeding. Uh, but you have lots of disease, and hives don't last forever, and that's why they need to swarm out and establish a new hive every now and then. The benefits are much, much greater. Uh, obviously, strength in numbers. Uh, I know in Winnie the Pooh they may attack uh, honey and hives, but I wouldn't recommend it. And of course, the major benefit is great division of labor, as I already talked about, the difference between the queen, the drone, and the uh, worker bees. So how are things organized? Well, we have a hierarchy. Now, the interesting thing is, is the queen the top of the hierarchy? Well, in one sense, I suppose she is. But in the other sense, the queen is basically kept as a prisoner by all the other bees. Uh, she is simply trapped inside the hive, and they just use her to breed, breed, breed. And the worker bees just haul her around whenever they want to. Uh, most of the other bees are pretty much clones, so their genes are going to be represented uh, by that queen. Uh, does the uh, hive situation ever change? Yeah, it does. Pretty much the hive kind of collapses when it gets too big. You can only maintain so big a hive. Normally this happens probably in spring, and in order to keep the colony from getting too large, the queen flies off with, oh, about half, sometimes I've seen 60% of the bees, and they're looking for a new place to establish a hive. This is called swarming. The bees left behind, they have to get themselves a new queen, and uh, they keep hold of the old uh, hive. Okay, behavior types. Well, one of the most interesting one is the courtship ritual. So um, the drones are going to mate with her, but not all of them. Now the virgin queen flies off, usually quite fast and quite high, and the drones have to try and catch her. Uh, a lot of them just die trying to catch her. If they do catch her, they mate with her, but the bad news is, not going to get too graphic here, but the end result of the mating process is they die. Kind of a rough courtship. Uh, another one we talked about already, that's the waggle dance, which is kind of looking like this, where they spin around and kind of a figure eight, and the intensity of the waggle and the direction uh, tells the position uh, of the honey, excuse me, not the honey, but the pollen, in relationship to the sun, so the other bees can go off and get it. Uh, finally, natural selection and altruism. So natural selection is where uh, bees will try and increase the uh, genetic strength of the hive. I already talked about the courtship ritual. That would definitely guarantee that the strongest uh, drones pass on their genes to the queen. 
Now, altruism happens a lot in bees. Here's why. The worker bees cannot produce. Remember, they are sterile. The queen is the only guy who can breed, but she is genetically very similar to all the other beans. So she is carrying all their genes. This is called kin selection. That is, they're related. So oftentimes the worker bees will sacrifice themselves in order to the queen to pass on their genes. For example, if a honeybee stings somebody, it pretty much dies in the act, but doesn't care because the hive is still intact, it survives, and their genes get to be passed on. That is my story of the bees.